Welcome back to the 2015-2016 NBA preview. Today we are going to be covering the Boston Celtics, which we have ranked at number 16. My name is Joshua Enviers, and with me today is my co-host. Yo, what's up, YouTube? It is the one and only legend of winning, aka Low. Now, before we go any further with this episode, I would just like to say that yes, we are finally in the playoffs. It took a very, very long time to get here, but these are the 16 teams in the West and in the East that we predict will make the playoffs. So we're basically at the halfway mark of this series. So by now, I've probably received so many hate comments saying this team's too low, this team's too high on previous videos of mine. So I just want to clarify here once again for any new viewers, this NBA preview is not focused on the past or the future of the organizations that we talk about. It is about the present. It's about the upcoming season in the NBA and where we have them ranked seeding wise and record wise in the NBA. So with that said, let's take a look at what the Boston Celtics did leading up to this season. It took a while for Boston to recover from the rebuilding phase, but as of right now, in the direction they're going in, they lost Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and then Ray John Rondo. The big three era along with Rondo is now over and now there's a new era coming to Boston. We really do like what the Boston Celtics are doing. Unlike the Lakers, they're actually in a rebuild now mode and they're having some success with the rebuild now mode compared to what the Lakers are doing in the Western Conference. Now given they're in the Western Conference and the Boston Celtics are in the, the weaker Eastern Conference as well. After a lot of trades and draft picks, this is where the Boston Celtics are this upcoming season so let's take a look at what they acquired this off season they acquired david lee amir johnson and perry jones um the thing about you know david lee uh, you know I, i'm assuming the biggest reason why they even made that trade is because of the gerald wallace contract and how big of a contract that was and they finally got him off the books david lee solid power forward veteran on an extremely young team uh, and he's a player even in the finals when they played against Cleveland um David Lee most definitely was able to get his shot to even within the limited amount of um, PT that he was receiving from the Warriors Amir Johnson hustle player Perry Jones um, in this deep of a lineup I don't necessarily know how much PT he's going to get uh, but not really much to say about their acquisitions for what they lost they lost a fairly good amount they lost Marcus Thornton Brandon Bass and finally, Gerald Wallace. As for the players they drafted, they drafted Terry Rozier III, RJ Hunter, Jordan Mickey, Malcolm Miller, and Corey Walden. Most of those guys, at, for sure at least two of those guys will see minutes in being Terry Rozier and RJ Hunter. Those are the two likely guys that are going to be getting minutes with this team. So it's going to be interesting to see if uh, any trades go down with all these rookies on the team. So they have five rookies. Hopefully somebody you know materializes something out of Hopefully. those players but you know with the what with, with the lineups and as many players on this team it's not much pt to be shared amongst rookies now onto the rotation for the boston celtics at center tyler zeller david lee evan turner avery bradley and marcus smart and last year i looked at the same you know extremely similar rotation i didn't think that they were going to make the playoffs but this is a team that really fights a team that really goes after it a team that really you know a lot of fights. defense in that starting lineup a lot of defense and a lot of hustle so i think that's the biggest thing david lee questionable if he's going to play how many minutes how many games because he he is uh, fairly injury prone but you know I, I like the hustle from evan turner over the past you know 30 the last 30 40 games in a season so we'll, we'll most definitely see if he can bring that type of intensity back around next year and off the bench kelly olenic amir johnson jay crowder james young and isaiah thomas which is even more hustle guys and like we should have mentioned, Isaiah Thomas will be hopefully with the Boston Celtics for a full season to see what he has. Yeah, and I think there's another reason why we kind of put him so high. Isaiah Thomas, you know, he he, he wasn't there for team. half the season he, last year. He joined the team halfway and he was still able to be a, a huge part of the offense and most definitely aided them into their um their succession of getting that eighth seed. Also, Jaron Sullinger is also going to be a rotation guy within this mix. Um, I can most definitely see him receiving a lot more minutes, especially if David Lee doesn't really pan out. Um, but th this is like a, a legit, you know, 10, almost 11 man rotation of just solid players. Again, it's not going to be somebody, you know, crazy good, but just really solid players 
Um, so again, applaud to the Celtics for piecing together a pretty solid rotation. And I like what they're doing. I, I really do. There's like no one standout superstar quite yet. I mean, Isaiah Thomas, he might be getting a few starts here and there, depending on how Marcus Smart does. Uh, Marcus Smart did like break his fingers or something along those lines in summer league. So hopefully Marcus Smart could be back early. And uh, if not, Isaiah Thomas and Terry Rozier are right there. So now moving on to the questions surrounding the Boston Celtics. So of course, like I say all the time, the question is something I ask you, the viewer, and Josh, and we try to answer it within the video. So of course, your answer, please put in the comment section below. And the question always pertains to the team that we're talking about. With the Boston Celtics, the big question that I have for them is, is eighth seed, especially in the East, is that something that you want to consistently grab? And is that, you know, quote unquote, an accomplishment? Being being the eighth seed for multiple years, you know, that's that's really going to get you nowhere with draft picks. And it might lure, you know, some free agents to want to come help you and try to, you know, boost you out of that eighth seed. But overall, you know, I don't think that being an eighth seed is going to help the team. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna make fans want to come to games more often. The fans are gonna get, you know, playoff basketball, but unfortunately, probably only just to get swept. So, to answer the question, it, it won't get them anywhere until they decide, you know, to do a trade or decide to go the opposite direction and, you know, just try to tank one season again. But I think the Boston Celtics are trying a lot faster to be done with tanking than the Los Angeles Lakers at this point. You know, I, I will say this. I, I do applaud the Celtics for actually going out there and uh, attempting to win games and put together a team that is willing to um, really fight just to, you know, get to the eighth spot. Even though that may not really amount to much, they're still actually winning games. So I do uh, um, applaud them for that. But realistically speaking, just winning the eighth spot really and truly doesn't amount to much. Again, it is another playoff appearance. And it is, you know, reps for your players for playoff appearances and so they can be ready when it is time to start winning championships. But I just don't see how that really amounts to much when you're missing out on draft picks and potentially a franchise player that you can build around. But they do have pieces there. So if anybody is in free agency, you know, they could kind of look at the Celtics a tad bit more alluring than a team like the Knicks or the Lakers. So moving on to the predictions, um, Boston Celtics. They are a playoff team mainly because they do play. They're going to be fighting, that's for sure, with the Pacers, depending on how well the Pacers do. They they so. will be fighting, but in, and I do like what they've done in the offseason. Finally got rid of Gerald Wallace, picked up David Lee, even though David Lee may not you know, play too many games. I do like what they've done. They do have plenty of pieces to trade if they do, if it does come down to that. And, of course, they also had draft picks to trade as well. So a team that probably will make more trades down the line, if anything else. My prediction is, and my hope for the Boston Celtics, is get rid of some of that power forward depth. They really, to be totally honest, have a four-man deep. David Lee, Amir Johnson, Jared Sullinger, and Perry Jones at power forward. They're definitely going to need to do something with that lineup. I know they could play you know, Perry Jones, a small forward, Sullinger at power forward, and Amir Johnson at center. But I would love it to see if they traded one or two of those guys to get a better asset like at small forward for example or even a better center to start besides Tyler Zeller. With that said, we'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you could leave a like on this video and share it with anybody you know, it would be greatly appreciated. A lot of time, effort is put into this. So greatly appreciate it like i said like we always say man shout out to everybody who's watching the videos we love the we love the support we love the views we love the comments that y'all leave in the comment section um always always love to respond to you all as well but keep sharing it keep liking keep favoring and just spread the word that um this is what we're doing we will see y'all next time we are in the playoffs people but we are in the playoffs we'll talk to you guys later bye 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 guys